Hey guys and welcome to video one. This video is probably the most important video of the entire training. The reason why is because it really covers this idea of metabolic uniqueness and there's a lot of nuance and gray in that. You know, it's not just that we're unique metabolically. We're also unique psychologically. We're also unique in our personal preferences and desires. But here's the thing to know. What we are not saying at Metabolic Effect is that we are not human. Humans share 99.99% of the metabolism. So we're all very, very, very similar. But what we do know is that a little bit of difference can make a huge difference in whether or not a program is going to work for you or not. And you're going to need to understand that in order to be the detective and create this program. The first thing you're going to want to do before watching this video is go to the New Me Diet Book or the Metabolic Effect Diet Book. They're the same book and take the metabolic questionnaire so that you know whether you've been stratified as a sugar burner, a mixed burner, and a muscle burner. And here's the thing, for those of you who are advanced and even for those of you who are beginners, here's the thing to know. There is a ton of science back behind this. However, whenever you take complicated matters, right, whenever you take hormonal physiology and all this stuff and try to simplify it, it's inevitable that you're going to oversimplify it. And that's good for the beginners because they don't need to know all the science behind this. But for you advanced individuals, what I ask is you sort of look and see what we're essentially trying to say, even though you're probably going to find some oversimplified areas that may or may not bother you. But I think you'll see the truth of this training as we go through. So the first thing to sort of understand, take the quiz and you will be stratified into a sugar burner, a mixed burner, or a muscle burner. Now here is the thing to understand. You are burning all fuels all of the time. So it's not that you are burning sugar and all of a sudden switch off burning sugar and start burning fat. You're burning all of them all the time. You're burning some protein up. You're burning some fat and you're burning sugar. You're pretty much doing that all the time whenever you're not in the fed state. When, after you eat, you're probably storing some of those things. What we're essentially saying is a proportion. You might be burning a higher proportion of sugar then you are burning fat if you are a sugar burner. And we've used sort of clinical signs and symptoms to tell us if that's true. By the same token, if you've been stratified as a muscle burner, what we're essentially saying there too is that you're probably burning up a little bit more protein and muscle tissue than you need to because you are stress hormone dominant perhaps. And then mixed burners are sort of the people who burn a good mix of both and their lifestyle, whether they overeat, will push them into the sugar burner category or whether they overstress may push them into the muscle burner category. So that's really what we're saying here. All we're essentially saying is there are people who live to eat. They typically tend to be these sugar burner types. They need food. They want food all the time. They're craving sugar. They have a little bit of insulin resistance which makes them more reliant on sugar and less able to burn fat. They tend to be a little heavier. I'm a sugar burner. I put on muscle really easily, but I also put on fat really easily. So I'm in that sugar burner category. Mixed burners sort of burn a good mix of both, and that's technically where you want to be. It'd be great if you could have that balance. And most people, especially when they're young, they have a mixed burner metabolism. And then muscle burners just tend to be, it's just a designation we use to describe someone who is more impacted by stress. These people te technically, um, they don't live to eat, they eat to live, right? So these are the people who forget to eat, who sort of run on, you know, um, nervous energy. You've probably seen these people. They can go all day without eating and be just fine. Those are sort of the muscle burners. Now, some of you when you've taken this quiz may have said, look, Jade, I look like a sugar burner, um, but I scored as a muscle burner. What is up with that? And here is what's up with that. This physiology, as you become more insulin resistant and as you become more stress reactive, you end up in a place that has a very similar physiology. And this is what we sometimes return or refer to as homo obesis. And it's not to poke fun or uh, make fun of anybody. It's a term that researchers have described that has a very dysfunctional 
insulin metabolism and a very dysfunctional stress hormone metabolism. And once you get in this area, it's very difficult to tell where you've come from, right? So it's very important to understand that what we're doing with this metabolic questionnaires, we are not saying that everyone falls into three categories. In fact, what we are saying is that there is a continuum and there's many, many different ways, metabolic types along this continuum. For instance, I am sort of on this end of the spectrum. I store fat easily, I put on muscle easily, but I'm not, you know, sort of the typical uh, sugar burner. So I fall in this area. You may find that you're a stress individual and you fall maybe in this area. Some of you may completely relate to the fact that, wow, when I took that questionnaire, if you're someone who took that questionnaire and you resemble a sugar burner, but you came out scoring as a muscle burner, then you can almost be sure that you fall right in this category. So what is the purpose of this? Remember structured flexibility. What we are essentially doing is we're trying to say, listen, based on some of these indications that are coming from your body, these biofeedback tools, things like whether you put on weight easily, things like the types of foods you crave, things like how uh, light affects you, if you're light sensitive or not. A lot of people wonder about that question. Well, stress hormones dilate the pupils, and so people who are stress hormone dominant often are sensitive to bright lights. But ultimately, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get you and find your place on this continuum. Wherever you are, we're trying to find where that is. So that then we can provide a diet and exercise and lifestyle tips to get you started. That is the key there, to get you started. That's the beginning of the process, not the end of the process. And then what you begin to do is follow that particular program that is outlined for you in the book. If you're a muscle burner, you start following that program. And then what you do is you read the biofeedback clues of the body, which you've learned about. So you pay attention to hunger, energy, and cravings, and then you adjust, and you tweak, and you mold, and you fit a new lifestyle. And perhaps you find that, wow, I'm moving back in this mixed burner uh, direction. Or perhaps you find you require even more carbohydrates uh, than you thought. And muscle burners typically can get away with more carbohydrate. Because, why? Because carbohydrates uh, help suppress the stress response, whereas sugar burners cannot. And so this idea of structured flexibility, this idea of stratifying you into one of three categories is just the starting point. It's just the beginning. So as you look at the Metabolic Effect book, and you look at the plan, you need to understand that what we are doing is giving you structure, which is the easy part, but then your job is to create the flexibility. And one more thing I'll say about this here, the further you come over here into the sugar burner category, the more you are gonna be impacted by carbs. In other words, starchy foods and sweets are gonna have a negative effect on you because you tend to be insulin dominant, insulin resistant, which means that your physiology is a little different than everyone else. You tend to suffer more from hunger and cravings and energy fluctuations. Whereas, over here on the stress physiology side, starchy carbs and sweets might be a little bit better tolerated. These people tend not to want to eat that much. And so they might find themselves exercising like crazy and not feeling their body and pushing themselves into sort of a fatigue state and wondering why they're gaining fat around the middle or the belly. And these people here in the middle are sort of the lucky ones, but they certainly can be pushed more to the sugar burner side if they're overeating carbohydrates or more to the muscle burner side if they are stressing and having this stress physiology. So the point of this is just basically to show you that this is just a starting point. It's just a model. It's just the beginning of getting you to understand that you must have structure, which we've given you in those plans, but you also need to understand that you have to tweak this and be very flexible to find exactly where you lie on this continuum, right? To find exactly where you lie on this continuum. And a lot of that's gonna have to do
do with getting the protein, carbohydrate, fat ratios correctly, modifying lifestyle and rest and recovery if you're a muscle burner and all those kinds of things. So the, the thing I want you to do at this point is watch this video several times if you need to and really get it in your head that there are not three types of metabolism. That's ridiculous. There's infinite metabolic types. You are unique. So it's not about me finding my sugar burner metabolism and following that. It's about me finding my jade metabolism and tweaking that. And what I've found is I score very heavily on the sugar burner side. But I actually require a little bit more carbohydrates than um, than I thought at first as I did this because I thought, hey, I should go low carb and paleo and not do any carbohydrates. You know what that does to me? That increases my hunger, increases my cravings, and I'll go three days eating like that, and then I'll go four days binge eating because of it. But when I get the carbohydrates right, I don't have that, and that's what you're going to do. You may find that, hey, I'm a muscle burner, and you know I've been going way too low carbohydrate, and I need more of them. Or I'm a mixed burner who's doing too many carbohydrates, and I need to do less. Or I'm a mixed burner who's doing way too much uh, long duration cardiovascular exercise, not eating enough and not sleeping, which is pushing me into this muscle burner category. I'm getting thin and flabby, right? Now, the other thing I'll say about this is muscle burners do tend to be a little bit thin, but they can be overweight. It's just that when they are overweight, they're more of a flabby overweight, right? Whereas sugar burners look a lot more solid like me, a lot of muscle but dense, dense fat tissue. They look just solid and bigger. Muscle burners, who, when they become obese and they get over in this area here, they look more flabby, right? And so understand that in general, the description for a muscle burner is someone who's thin and, uh, you know, uh, a little less muscle on their frame and in general the sugar burner is this sort of overweight individual but the truth is muscle burners can be overweight so can sugar burners okay so I'm hoping that this begins the discussion for you about metabolic individuality and how uh, we tweak this this is the starting point this is the blueprint go take that questionnaire and understand that now the job is to tweak things as you go and find your unique metabolic type. So let's go on to the next video. Now we're going to talk about the psychological aspects of this.